I'm going to show you how to edit your first YouTube video with Final Cut Pro. So to get started, let's open a new project. I'm just going to go up to File, under New, and then go to Project. And here I can title my new project, whatever I want, and then I can click OK, and we've created a brand new project. Now before we do anything, the first thing I recommend doing is open up Final Cut Pro, open up your preferences, go under the Imported section, and turn files to leave files in place instead of copy to library storage location. If you have it set to copy to library storage location, you'll be duplicating your video files and you're gonna lose like all the storage on your MacBook. So by doing this, it's gonna leave the files in place. As long as you don't move them around, it'll be able, you'll be able to edit them within Final Cut Pro while saving your storage. And with that being set up, let's import our footage into Final Cut. So what I'm gonna do here is right click and I'm gonna click new event. And this is gonna be kind of our album where we're gonna import all our footage into. So we'll do a tutorial project and I'll click enter. And you can see now I have this new album here called tutorial project. And I can now click import media. Usually the easiest route for me is just to click on my Macintosh HD, go to my users, go to my name, and then kind of go for my albums and find my footage. All right, so I imported my first video clip here. If you do need to import more footage, you can always click this down arrow button up on top, and that'll open up the import section where you can find your footage. All right, so I have my two video clips added. I can actually scroll through these with my mouse, and you'll hear this, listen. When as you scroll through, you can actually hear the little audio noises going. If you don't like that, you can always scroll over here and turn this off. So that way when you scroll through, it's silent. Um, I personally like hearing those little audio sounds as I scroll through so I can find the right spot. I can also click in here and I can click the space button to play the video. Here are the best places. So that way I can kind of make sure it's the right clip that I want to use. Now to add the footage to our timeline, we just hold down with the mouse drag down to the timeline and let go. And it gets added here. Um, and for the sake of not being noisy on the microphone, I will turn this off for now. <laughs> um, and then we can use, we can pinch with our fingers on the mouse pad and it'll zoom out and zoom in. Um, and then what we'll actually do is we'll add this second clip in. And the only reason I'm using this second clip here is I wanna show you how to rearrange clips, which it's the exact same process. You're just holding down on the mouse and you can just drag over to the other side let go and you've rearranged your clips. One useful feature is using something called Command Z, which is the Command button and the Z button. You can also always go up to Edit and do Undo Move, which you can see the Command Z here, but that'll reverse any mistakes you make. So let's say I accidentally clicked the Delete button and it's gone. I can click Command Z and it reverses that action. I can do it one more time and it rearranged it back to where it originally was. So having that backup button, super useful, especially if you're brand new to editing. All right, so let's get into trimming your video clips, which in Final Cut Pro, there are so many different ways, so many different shortcuts you could go about trimming your video clips. And I find that overwhelming as a brand new creator to Final Cut Pro. I just want you to get in here, start messing around, getting used to how things work. And then later on in this playlist actually that I'm making, we'll get into how to do shortcuts and different things like that so you can edit faster. But we're gonna just do pure basics here. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm going to zoom in right where I am on the timeline. You can always just click around to move this, they call this a playhead, and that's usually right where we're about to make an edit. So this is right when I'm about to talk, I can see my mouth moving on the preview screen. So I'm gonna line it up perfectly, and then what I'm gonna do is something called the blade tool. So if you click Command B, it'll make a split in the video. So this is now one section, and this is a completely different section. We've cut the video clip in half. So what I then can do is click on this, I can click the delete key on my MacBook, and it deletes it. And now we're back at the beginning here, and this is right where my video clip starts. Here are the best places to get copyright free music. And that's where I stop talking for this clip, and I can click Command B again, and it made a split. So this is my little section here, and that means I can now scroll ahead to, I think I mess up there. So I can scroll ahead to this part here where I start talking again. Command B splits the clip in half. And now I have this section here. This is where the first sentence was, split there. This is nothing going on. 
did another split, and this is where I start talking again. So I can just delete this part in the middle, and now we have sentence one. We have sentence two here. When I get to the end, I can do another command B, and I can just kind of go through each of these spots and just kind of cause two splits in between the spots where I'm not talking, and then clicking the delete button to put it all together to where I'm in full sentences. And then I can go through all my clips and make those. So just using that simple blade tool and then deleting the parts that you don't need is a great way to go through your timeline. You can also, if you want, click on the video clip and grab the far side and drag it if you want. I find this to be a little bit too inaccurate, but it is an option there. You can grab either side and just move it through the timeline, but you'll get a lot more specific edits if you do Command B and then clicking delete on either side that you want, or if you just want this section removed, Command B, click on that, delete, going about it that route. Now that you know the basics of trimming, let's get into video settings and how to customize those, and then we'll also get into things like text and music and things along that line. So all we have to do is select whichever video we want to edit. So I clicked on this one, it's got yellow highlighted, and then my video settings are over on this side. And they're all pretty well organized. Composition, you know, I could turn the opacity on and off. Transform is like size and position. So what is the size of our video? Do we want it to be more zoomed in? Uh, do we want it rotated? You know, do we want to scale it more to the left, to the right, up, down, all those kinds of things. Something useful is this square box here, which is called transform. When I click it, it actually puts little points around this video. So I can actually grab those. I can shrink the video. I can increase its size. I can then drag this video around. So if I want to do like a crop in, you know, I can align it like so, and then my video is cropped in. Otherwise I can command Z and go back to, you know, the original format, but it'll let me customize all of that there. Crop is more of just if you want the video to be more narrow, like as you see me right now, I did a crop on this video and put myself, and then I used the transform tool and made myself smaller like so, and then moved myself over to the corner. So that'd be an example of using the crop tool. That's what this effect is, but we will command Z it back to its original form. But that's what that's used for. And then the rest of this is getting a little bit more advanced. So you have those settings there. If we click over here to this option, this is where we can make color corrections. Uh, so basically how Final Cut Pro works, you have color, saturation, and exposure, which exposure is usually a good spot to start. So for exposure, you can change the brightness on the highlights, midtones, shadows, and global. So you can click here and just change the percentage, or you can grab these little knobs and move them around like this will for everything, increase the brightness, lower the shadow, um, otherwise, if I want just the highlights to kind of decrease brightness, maybe the shadows increase a little, and I can also mess with the midtones. Um, a lot of times I just find myself messing with the knobs until I find something I like, um, which I actually kind of want those highlights a little brighter. I like that. Awesome. And then I can click over to the saturation section. And here I can also change the saturation, which I usually like things to be a little bit more brighter and colorful. And then this color section is a little bit more of a design-esque thing. So maybe for the highlights, I want to look a little more blue. I can add a little more blue to my image. I can add a little more purple or yellow. So you can kind of mess around with it like that if you want. And then if you do click up here, you can get into stuff like color board, wheels, curves, and different things like that, which is a little bit more advanced, but this will give you some basic customization to make sure your image looks great. We then have our sound settings, so we can turn the volume up or down if something's too loud or something's too quiet. We can customize it there, so that's really useful. And then this eye is just kind of all the settings for this video that most of the time you don't need to worry about. But with video settings being done, let's actually hop over to transitions because I think that is useful. So it's kind of hidden away. Transitions is actually down right here. So if I click on this, it opens up the transition section where I can take a look at all the different transitions I can choose from. For example, I'm on dissolves. This is a basic cross dissolve. So if I click on this, I can actually drag it over right in between a clip and let go. And now when I click play, it will do a cross dissolve. Since I was in the same spot, you couldn't really tell that much. What I could actually do is maybe something like a fade to color so it kind of 
fades to black and then comes back. So you can all go through all these and find different transitions that you want to use and apply them to your videos. One other section to note too is this here, which is your effects section. So in here, there's different effects like focus effects, color effects, even some color presets that you can apply to your videos to give them a really custom look. Um, that's all in here. You'll also find things like uh, the lo luma keyer, chroma keyer kind of stuff, masks, different things like that. They're all hiding in this effects section. You'll also see some audio effects in here that you can use, but that is under this tab. So if it's deselected, you know, you can kind of hide it away, but that's where those effects are. Now, if you want to add text to our video, we can actually scroll up here. This is the video section. We can scroll over here to text and generators. And this is where we're gonna find all our different text effects that are in here. Now you can actually hover your mouse over any of the text effects and get a little preview of what they're going to look like. So I can see this one previewed. Um, probably for example, I'm just gonna go for something pretty basic um, like this one. This is just a basic lower thirds that fades in and out. So what I can do is just hold the mouse down and drag to the timeline and let go. And that adds it to the timeline. Um, I can then click on the text and we'll have more settings up here for text effects. So if I click over here, I can change the color as well as the font and the size. If I click here, I can actually change the text. So I can change this over to my name, Colin Michael, and do some other changes here as well. If I click on this video section, if you remember that transform tool where we click this little box and we could crop in on our videos, it applies the same to text. So with that selected, I can actually drag this around the screen. If I want it up here, if I want it in the middle, you know, I can customize this and do it however I want. I'll actually leave it here. Um, I'll back it up and leave it like that for now, but I do have those options. I can also do the same crop effects there, but that'll pretty much get you started with text effects. There's a lot of cool ones built into Final Cut Pro. Now, if you want to add music to your project, there's actually not really a built-in music library for Final Cut Pro. You can click over here, and they do have a pretty extensive sound effect library that you can add in, but it's not necessarily music. Now, I did just do a video on the best copyright free music that you can use for your videos, both free and paid. I'll leave a link to that video down in the description. But my main recommendation for people is to get Epidemic Sound. It's what I use, I've used it for years. It's the best collection of music and software, and it's super easy to get into Final Cut Pro. If you're interested in checking out this software, I do have a free trial link down below where you'll get 30 days free. And if you end up paying for it, I do get credit for it. But whether you're doing YouTube or films or family videos or whatever your plan is, they've got a huge selection on Epidemic Sound. And from what I've seen, it's the top quality music that I can't really seem to find anywhere. Now, what I like to do with Final Cut Pro for the music section is I actually went over to my video section and made a separate album for music here. And I'll actually just import the music once I download it on my computer. So I have all my music and different sound effects in here. So for this one, I can just drag and drop it right into the timeline and that adds the music in. And then I can also change the volume over here on the setting side. So I can drop it down to like negative 40, which is usually about right for me. And then I have the music added to my timeline. Now we're just about ready to export our video, but I do want to cover one more thing, and that is something called layers. So with layers, we obviously have the video layer here, we have the audio under the video, and we have the text above the video. That's kind of the understanding of how kind of layers work. But if we want, we can actually add photos on top of our videos or videos on top of our videos. Or maybe in my case, this video was actually the video where I was talking about like the copyright free music. Uh, so I brought up like things like Epidemic Sound. So I can drag this photo of Epidemic Sound, drop it on top of my timeline. I can grab either side to trim it. But then what I can also do is click on this, go over to that transform button, make sure that's on and then just change the size. I can drag it down like so. I can align it right here, just like so. And what I can also do is go to my transition section and I can just grab a cross dissolve and drop it on. And now, all you have to do is, click is it'll fade on like there. Um, I'll actually turn this down here. It'll fade on and it'll fade off. And that layer will just hover above this video. And I can even grab this. I can drag it around if I want. Um, but yeah, that is layers. So you can stack photos on top of photos, videos on videos. You have all those effects built in here. So with our video done, it's now time to export it, which we can just click this export button. There are some built-in settings here, like for YouTube and Facebook, 1080p, 4K. 
Um, you can get into ad destination and do some more customizations to make sure you're getting the highest quality. But I think for most people who are gonna be uploading to YouTube or just wanna do a straight 1080p 4K um, or, or export file default, you can go in here, make sure you're getting the right size if you really want it to be a huge file. Um, but I think for most people, just do YouTube and Facebook upload it to YouTube if that's your goal, and then you have that project done. Now, like I said, this is only part one of a multi-part series, so check this playlist out to make sure you're learning all the tips and tricks within Final Cut Pro, including in advanced features where we're gonna get into keyboard shortcuts and different things like that that are gonna help you speed through editing and be able to do more within this software. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you over there.